Hello, everybody. Welcome again to a very impromptu video. Um, once again, like the video I released on Tuesday night regarding the dosha, I was actually not filming on planning today. I, I was not planning on filming today. There we go. That said, I was just going to edit stuff today. But um, I've gotten, again, a lot of emails. And it seems a lot of people are starting to kind of figure out this whole idea of consent. And I kind of wanted to talk about it again, because it's so important. And I've said before, jokingly, and I kind of mean it, the most valuable thing you can do in this great, great awakening is to find yourself a friend who has been awake for like 20 years or more, because they're going to, they're handling this. The people that have been awake for a really long time are handling this great awakening with a lot more grace and a lot more patience and a lot more clarity than people who are just now waking up. People who are just now waking up are definitely getting involved into the derangement, the delusions of spirituality, all that kind of stuff. They, they're not aware of junk conspiracy, what that looks like. And they're also not super aware about what consent really looks like. And again, this is kind of what I wanted to talk about today. Now, yes, everything that's going out on in the outside world, all of the arrest, all that kind of stuff, that's all in the exterior of you. The most important thing about this great awakening is your own spiritual path. If you've been following along with the missing books of the Bible, outside knowledge is edio. Inner knowledge is gnosis. And we want to look more at the gnosis. However, when it comes to the edio, we really have to understand the laws of consent. And we really have to understand what junk conspiracy looks like. Now, even the back channel, the military back channel, um, had said that 90, about 90% of the truthers were infiltrators. And I get that. That makes perfect sense to me. We know that this group of controllers, they're not stupid. They also have had Project Looking Glass. They knew what was coming. And so because they're not stupid, they put in people to help sway the crowd away from the Great Awakening. Now, as I say this, I am going to call in Michael and Gabriel to be here with me now to guard this recording and to help me say the appropriate words regarding this, this situation or this subject. I am working really hard right now to try to get someone that I know on the channel to really talk about the law of one and what fourth density positive and fourth density negative look like. This person in my life is very shy. So I'm trying to convince him to come on with like a fake name and a, an icon just to discuss this. So it maybe makes, maybe there's more, makes more sense, right? Junk conspiracy is bunk conspiracy that's put out by the bad guys for multiple reasons. One, to make us look crazy. Two, to make us start doubting what's happening. And three, to help us or to push us through a loophole of maybe uh, treading on other people's free will or other people's consent. And I'm going to say it this way. I'm going to use this as an example. To say that this is a placebo is junk conspiracy. Why is that? Because for the average human being, for the 99% of the world that's not in the group of controllers, it is our choice what we do with our bodies. A product was made available and it was each individual's choice whether they took that product or not. So for those who signed up and went to get this, if they were given a placebo instead without their knowledge, then that is a negative demonic thing to do because the person that gave them this as a placebo when they consented to the real thing just basically wrecking balled that individual person's right to free will and right to choice. Okay. It's exactly the same. So we don't want that for those of us who have rejected that, we don't want it. We don't consent to it. We don't want someone forcing us to then get it right. Cause that, that is not our free will. 
Well, it's the same thing for the other side. If you're sitting there saying it's a placebo, wink, wink, then you're doing the same thing that they're doing to you. It's all forcing your will onto someone else. Yes, we know this is bad for us because we've researched it, but other people have it and other people decided they wanted it and other people wanted to inject themselves with that. And that was their right to choose to do so. Just as it's our right to choose not to do so. We don't know what their soul contract is. Maybe there's a lesson for them to learn through that experience. We can't step in, the, in, in, in line of that. You know, if we sit there saying, oh, they've made placebos because it's for your own good. That's what the fucking Nazi said too. Wake up, wake up. There's no placebos. The only people who perhaps got a placebo were the ones who knew they were getting a placebo, like the, the one person who did it on TV. Yeah, does that make sense? And so just as we want our rights to be respected and our choices to be respected, we also have to extend that same courtesy to our fellow human beings. Yes, we can sit there and try to warn them and try to say, hey, have you looked at this study or have you looked at this? We can try all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's each individual person's choice. Now, with that being said, we're not free of the consequences of our choices. And so for some of those people, yeah, they might not be able to have children. They might have some health backlash because of it. We also ran the risk for some of us of losing our jobs, losing friends and family. There's always going to be a cause and effect. There's always going to be consequences. But still, we cannot step in the way of somebody else's decision. Part of being polarized positive is allowing people to live their lives in their own pursuit of their own happiness. That's why it says that in the American Constitution, to have the pursuit of happiness. For me, my happiness, what that looks like for me, might not look the same for you. And that's okay. One of my favorite mottos in life is live and let live. Like as long as somebody's not hurting you and not impeding on your right to be here and not hurting somebody else, then let people be. That's kind of my motto, and that's the motto of consent and free will. So these infiltrators, so if, you're, if they are already decided to go to fourth density negative, if they've already decided that's the path of service to self that they're going to take, first of all, they have to tell you who they are. So a lot of these infiltrators have told you who they are. They've talked openly about, you know, cooking. I can't say the full word on YouTube, or um, they have emblems on their channel to show you who they are. And when you keep watching them and when you keep like applauding them and repeating their junk conspiracy, you're consenting to allow them to do that to us as humans. You've given that permission. It's just like these controllers with Hollywood. We know in Hollywood, they put movies out to tell us what's going to happen. And if we don't say no or stop, if we buy tickets and watch these movies and applaud it and give it awards, then we're consenting to allow it to happen. And so each and every individual really needs to sit down and have like a come to Jesus moment or a come to Yahshua moment and understand what that consent actually looks like and understand what the white hats are really doing. That's why the white hats were not the ones to invade Mar-a-Lago. That's not a, to dress up, to lie to people, to do something like that is not a positive polarity because it's based on a lie, Right. It's based on a lie. And even before I had my military contacts, I knew that, but I've had confirmation from my military contacts that no, that was not the white hats that, that invaded Mar-a-Lago. That was very much the black cats. So we just need to stop. We need to, we need to all come into ourselves and understand what truth looks like. Truth looks like free will and consent. Truth looks like something that is, God is not complicated. Source creator is not complicated. It's all common sense. Do that's the one one of the things in the Bible that's correct. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So if we go back to this thing, if you how would you feel if you decided for yourself that you thought it was in your best interest to have this and then you went to have it done and somebody like wink wink gave you a fake one? How would you feel? I'd be pissed. 
That's not what I consented to. Now, again, just so this doesn't get twisted, I don't support this. I will not date anyone who's had this. I don't want to be around it. I think it's completely demonic, but that's my choice. I can't stand in the way of other people's choices. Now, yes, consequences to that choice. If, if, if someone wants to come into my life that's had that, they might not be able to because I don't want the, the, the repercussions. Yeah? Does that make sense? I'm hoping that makes sense. And again, with the Ascension guys, I, I know I've gotten so many awesome emails uh, with our, my series with Emmy and staff, and we're going to be putting up another one um, this week as well. You have to work on yourself. And there's a really great, uh, in, in Sri Swami Satitananda's commentary of the Yoga Sutras, he talks about this. The more you start to recognize your own soul, the more you recognize the soul in other people. And it's kind of that, that same way with the idea of consent. The more you recognize your own free will, the more you honor and recognize the free will of others. But that comes through your own work. You cannot ride this great awakening out on the coattails of other people. If you try to do that, you might not make it right? You might have to go back and do third density again. So, and I don't want to scare anybody. If you're, if you're actively working on yourself, even if you feel like you're in over your head and it's overwhelming, you're still working on yourself. So chances are you're going to go positive because the work is never done. And it, it's always going to feel a little bit overwhelming. It's always going to feel like, oh my God, there's so much to work through. But as long as you are settling into that and settling into understanding that's your job as a human being is to work through your own stuff, then you're good. You're, you're already on that fourth density positive roadmap. So don't, don't worry about that. I don't want to scare anybody. But what I'm saying is, and I've said this before, and I hope I'm, I'm coming across clearly, the bad guys, the controllers and us, we know the same stuff. We know what they're doing. They know, we know what they're doing. We know, they know, we know what they're doing. We all know what's going on. We all know what's been going on on these islands. We all know what's been going on in the movies. Like we, we understand it now. We see them. We see you. We see what's happening. So with that being said, as far as information, we all have the same information. But what separates us from the controller? So the first thing that separates us from the controller is the fact that we're not psychopaths. The fact that we actually respect other human beings and we allow them to make their own choices. Okay? Because even these controllers have to have to play in the in the realms of free will and consent, but they manipulate it through loopholes like just imagery or movies, right? Another difference is that some of these truthers, truthers in this community that know the same information as the bad guys are still behaving like bad guys because they're out there gossiping. They're out there pulling tarot cards without people's consent. That's a negative polarity, guys. That's a fourth density negative polarity. If you are pulling tarot cards on people and you haven't realized, I mean, Stephanie and I used to do that too, before we realized that that was breaking a consent. And the minute Stephanie and I realized that we couldn't do that, we stopped and we've made it not on our channels that we're going to do that. And we've been talking about it openly. But even at this point, if you understand consent and you're still trying to pull cards on people without their permission, you're going fourth density negative. That's a negative polarity. It just is. And if you're still falling for these people who are working for the controllers, they're working for the three letter, letter agencies getting paid and you're still falling for it and following them, you're giving that fourth density negative more power by consenting to their behaviors. Yeah, this is all in the law of one. So that's the reason why they keep doing it is because they want that power. They want that energy from you. You just got to decide if you're willing to give it to them or not. Now, for me, I do believe that the earth will like split and there'll be basically two different timelines going on. I think there's going to be a fourth density positive and a fourth density negative. And some people will be harvested and harvested and will go negative. Some people, a lot of us are going to go positive, but some people are going to have to go back and do third density all over again. So what's that going to look like? That's going to look like death as we see it, and then have to go to another planet to redo this polarization, you know, and that's another thing about these things. So well, before we take this plan, before we take our life, we sit down and do a soul contract, right? We know what we're going to do. We know how we came here. From what I understand, earth is like a mega, 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 like Harvard third, this is one of the hardest third density planets there is. So like gangster planet to the T, right? 
And so a lot of souls that aren't, that aren't ready to be harvested, they're not ready. They're not, they don't qualify yet to go to fourth density, positive or negative. A lot of those souls decided to come here for this time just to be here to like get a bunch of credit so that, that they will build up like extra. So they could like basically jump from kindergarten to seventh grade. Right. So that next life they're in the third density, they'll be even more um, closer to being able to choose a path. Does that make sense? So with these things, as far as the positive side, for those that agreed to be on this earth for a certain amount of time and then leave before the ascension, some of them agreed in their soul contract to take this because that would be their way. Okay, so while I was editing this, I realized that um, the equipment copped out there. Someone really does not want us talking about this idea of consent. So before we go any further, I'm just going to spray some Florida water, which is holy water, asking that Gabriel and Michael come in, guide this recording. Um, let me do some dragon's blood for protection, to protect the space. Only those entities here for my highest good. The community's highest good be here to protect the equipment and protect the audio so that we can say whatever it is that needs to be said in this really crucial time. So before the equipment cut out, I was saying about this, that there are some souls that are not eligible yet to graduate to fourth density. They still need to be in third density. They don't have enough credit, right? If it was, was a university, they don't have enough credit to graduate. But they opted to come to planet Earth during this time, especially to kind of speed up the process so that the next life, the life after that, then they can make that decision. Well, because they knew they were not eligible to move forward to fourth density, they knew they would have to leave the Earth. They'd have to exit before the ascension happened. And so that's why some of them agreed to get this. Is it's an easy way to exit. You, know, you can't push a soul into fourth density if it's not time for that soul to be in fourth density. It's like taking a kindergartner and expecting them to excel at law school. You wouldn't do that, right? And God doesn't care. As I said this before, God, your soul, your soul's eternal. My soul's eternal. We're all eternal beings. So however long it takes, it takes. But we have to make that decision whether we're going positive or negative, right? So we have to allow, and we have to allow other people to make that decision too. We don't know what their soul contract is. Hell, hell, most of us can't even remember our own soul contract. So, you know, that's none of our business, what somebody else's soul contract is. I just want you guys to really, really, really consider what consent means and ask yourself as you're watching all these truthers, even me, even Stephanie, is what we're doing aligned with consent and free will? Or are we supporting something that's negatively impacting humanity? Okay, because if you are supporting it, then you're consenting to the negative impact of humanity. All right. I also want to tell you guys, I am so proud of each and every one of you ha who have started the journey of self-healing and shadow work. I am going to validate for you right now that it is not easy at all. Um, I am considering opening up a Telegram channel for Esoteric Atlanta. I'm also considering opening up a shadow work um, telegram channel for esoteric Atlanta for people who are heavily involved in trying to course correct and trying to heal themselves to have a place to like commiserate, talk with other people on the same journey. So that's something you guys would be interested in. Just let me know down in the comment section below. I, again, I'm so proud of you guys. It's not easy. It's not easy for anyone and it, it doesn't get easy. It gets easier because you get used to it, but the work is always there and you guys are rock stars you're rock stars, in my opinion, just for just for starting. And you're doing something really good for yourself, good for your soul. You're doing what your soul came here to do. Um, again, Emmy and I are going to be, uh, and Stephanie are going to be filming tomorrow for our next installment of Shadow Work. So any questions you have that have popped up, leave them down below. I think we're going to talk about psychedelics in this one and where psychedelics lay in this whole self-healing shadow work category and also if you have any other questions let us know and um, if you have any questions regarding the law of one let me know too because i am working on that episode as well all right guys i hope you're having a good day i'll talk to you soon bye